guns are out, so it must be time to do a bit of chemistry. Today we're going to look at exo and endothermic reactions and what they mean. If we go back to Latin, exo, that means outside, endo means inside, and we're going to see how that relates to exothermic and endothermic. So if you come over here, I've got a little bit of hydrochloric acid, and I've got a wee bit of magnesium. Now, if you look on my thermometer, this is room temperature, and we're around... 23 degrees, if you have a little look at that. Well, let's see what happens to the temperature on this thermometer when I add the magnesium. So I'm going to pop some magnesium into the hydrochloric acid. And we see, first of all, how do we know a reaction is taking place? Something's happening to let us know that there's a reaction. What is that gas that's being released, do you think? Now, if I pop my thermometer in there, we can see that it started off around 23 to 24. Pop it in there, look what happens to the thermometer's temperature. So let me tell you what's happening in there. This is what we call an exothermic reaction. It's actually giving out heat energy to its surroundings. So outside, exo, it's giving that heat energy away. So all that heat energy in this chemical reaction is coming out. It's coming out to the surroundings. So that's an exothermic reaction. Now we're going to look and come over and look at an endothermic reaction. Now you're actually going to design an experiment for these two types of chemicals. Here we've got a wee bit of ammonium chloride. And here we've got a little bit of barium hydroxide. Now what I've got is, I've got 25 grams of this chemical, and I've got 25 grams of ammonium chloride. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop those in there. So I'm going to pop those in there, pop that in there. Now I've got a glass stirring rod, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stirring these chemicals together. And as I start turning, uh, stirring even, it allows these chemical, this chemical reaction, can you see this is starting to change? A chemical reaction is starting to take place in there, and it's giving off a wild, smelly gas. It smells a bit like hair, hair dye. I don't know what that gas is called. Maybe you could find out that for me, but you can see there's a reaction. Something's happening in there. Now, I keep stirring, keep stirring, and it's starting to turn into a paste. Keep going, keep going. It should eventually turn into like a liquid. Look, if I keep going faster and faster, now what do you think, if that's an exothermic reaction that we looked at before, there we go, it's turned into a paste. If that was an exothermic reaction before, what do you think this type of reaction is? Now look, if you look at my thermometer, again, it's around room temperature, which is about 23. Pop that in there and look what happens to that temperature. Look what happens, it's starting to drop. Wow, that is going down rapidly. I want to pull it out in a second just to show you so you can see, but that has dropped almost down to minus 10. In fact, if I take it out now, you can see it's gone all the way down to minus 5. So what's happened in this reaction is the opposite. The energy from the surroundings has actually come into this chemical reaction. It needed energy for the reaction to take place. So it's taken that energy from the surrounding and that's allowed the reaction to happen. But as it's took in the energy, it's made the surroundings colder because it's took that energy in. The last thing I want you to do is first of all have a go at the questions that I've got below the video now. Then after that, I want you to design your own experiment for these chemicals. Now, if you look at my sheet here, this is, this is going to be in the description below. There's a link to the sheet. I want the method, what you're going to do in your experiment. Now, I want to design an ice pack, and I want it to be cold below zero for 10 minutes. How could I work out if an ice pack could using these chemicals would be suitable? So what I want is a method... So how are you going to work out if that ice pack is suitable? Remember, 10 minutes it has to stay cold for, below zero. What experiment could I do to do that? What equipment are you going to use? And then finally, a risk assessment. So, I've got to go and work on the guns now. Keep them in shape. It's Dr. B signing off.